morning, Gossip Girls, and welcome to our Gossip Girls Gold interview today with Gail McVeigh from Body Shop at Home. Um, you will love this interview. Gail is a really lovely, bubbly person. We meet every month, don't we, at our meeting uh, in Lancashire. And, you know, she's always a laugh. She's always a lovely person to get on with. And she's got a brilliant story. So, um, when you join in, just let us know that you're watching. Um, I can see you all jumping on now. So thank you for watching. And let's uh, hear a bit from Gail. So Gail, tell us what you do, and then we'll get into your story. Oh, fabulous. I've been really looking forward to this, Emma. I've been feeling your energy. I've been feeling it all bubbling. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am a manager with the Body Shop home so for anybody who doesn't know um we're a part of the body and the body in 1970 by Dame Anita and then in the 90s um the body home was born a lot of people didn't know that we have the um, body shop home as, as part of the body shop. um I think it people are getting to know it more now but I know when I think Started, there were a lot of people saying, oh, I've never heard of that. So I do think more people know about it now. So obviously we go into people's homes and take the and let people try them in their own. Yeah, so it's basically the body shop, the shop in your bag <laughs> and taking it into people's homes and letting them try the products and, you know, all those gorgeous smells and stuff like that that I remember. When was it? Uh, 1970 what 76 so before i was born it like the body shop was going it i can't believe it you know like gosh so it's like 45 years or something no, it wasn't before i was born emma <laughs> so, i remember the first body shop launching and i remember this is a, a real memory i have of going in and buying so I had my white musk perfume, I had my white musk body lotion. We even did a white musk talcum powder at that time. And I just covered myself, oh, shampoo, I was everything, head to toe in white musk. Um, and I thought it was dead cool. And um, I used to love that peach fuzz when peach fuzz came out. Do you remember? Was it peach fuzz? Um, not remembering that. Oh, there will have been a peach. There will have been a peach for sure. We don't do one now, but there will have been a peach. It's so it was really great to get into all of that stuff because that's like you coming of it. Like it's that kind of like when you're like learning a little bit about yourself and things like that. Um, so you've not obviously not always done body shop. Um, so what did you do before you started with body shop at home? Okay, so. I grew up in Blackpool. That was my hometown. I uh, went to school in Blackpool and all I ever wanted to do was be a journalist. That was from being really young. I remember as probably 10, 11 writing stories for my granddad. Just loved writing. That was all I ever wanted to do. Um, really lucky when I was 17, 16, 17. I wasn't quite 17 actually. I got a job um, at a paper in Bolton and I started as a trainee journalist and that was what I did then all my um, working life up until starting doing well not I started doing the body shop at home while I was still working as a journalist but um, so I'd say it's about seven years now since um, I started doing the body shop at home so you can probably work it out if you know i was born in 1962 um, well 17 or 16 is an early age to start working as well isn't it especially in that kind of career um so when you started doing body shop at home you were still working yes um, as a journalist what happened with that how did it all work for you Right, so what happened was one of my colleagues had been doing the body shop at home. I didn't think a lot about it at the time. Um, so that was Amanda, and she was our crime reporter at work. So I did features, and she was crime reporter. I'd done a lot of news, 
chasing fire engines. I'd done all that. And I was doing features, which I really enjoyed. Um, and Amanda was doing the body shop at home alongside her job. And then she left the paper to do the body shop at home as a career. And I thought, this is really strange. How can you make a career out of selling body butters? <laughs> Um, what I didn't realise then was there was a lot more to it than just selling body butters because, of course, we recruit and we build teams and that sort of helps us progress up the career ladder. So I had a, a quiet word with Amanda and I said, might be a silly question, Amanda, you know, I'm a lot older than you. Is it something I could do? And she was like, oh, of course, of course, you know, give it a go, Gail. Anybody can do this at any age. And I thought, well, why not? So I started doing it alongside my job. It was fine. I could fit it in around my job. I worked when I wanted to work um, and then realised I was doing so well, I didn't need to do the journalism anymore. And to be honest, I'd fallen out of love with, not the job, it's really hard to explain it, but the job had changed. I hadn't. I was still the same person wanting to do the same things, wanting to talk to people, wanting to meet people, wanting to get that side of the job you know that side of the job was what I really enjoyed most and we couldn't do that anymore um because we so why did that change in journalism what changed because we didn't have the time Emma so we had fewer staff we had um a new system set up where we were inputting without going into too much detail we were inputting the story straight onto the page where we used to have what we call sub-editors who subbed our stories and put them on the page for us. We were then doing that side of it as well. We just didn't have time to go and meet people and chat with them. It was all on the phone. It's not the same. Being on the phone is not the same as sitting in front of somebody and getting the story from them. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you are that kind of peaceful uh, people person. And now I've met you, it, it's such a difference, isn't it? when you meet somebody in person you know that like i knew that you were a bubbly lovely person but it just there's that extra level that that deeper level that you can go into and like you're really caring like um you you know you just feel like a nurturing kind of person and that comes across um that's probably like why your team like stay with you and things like that it's really good um so i think you know as a journalist, that would have helped as well because of your kind of aura with things, I think. Yeah, massively. As a journalist, I tended to get the um, the stories that needed more of the empathy. So I was always sent out, you know, to, to, to some, well, some of the sadder stories, really, um, which is not always good. So well, I've seen lately you've been a lot of a big help with um, the Ukraine and sending over donations to them at, at the warehouse and things like that. Do you want to tell us a bit about what you've been doing there? I'm going to continue, obviously, with it, because this could go on, well, it could go on for years, couldn't it? Um, and I got involved with that, um, getting donations, and you lovely ladies, including yourself, Emma, made donations to buy products to send out to Ukraine, which obviously I did without any, taking any commission, and I bought extra to send out so we sent shampoos and shower gels and things like that and when I went so I went thinking I'll just drop the box off and say here's your box of um things for Ukraine and and you know bye bye but I walked in and I thought I can't just do that you know there are there are lots of people here all different ages helping pack boxes I thought well I I, I need to do that too so I've started doing that and I do that generally I do that on a Wednesday and a Saturday um, the only reason I haven't been this week is I'm going on holiday on Friday, so I'm just kind of being a little bit cautious so that I don't end up poorly before I go away, because with COVID, you have to be so careful, don't you? But when I yeah, come back... I mean, it's really commendable that you've been doing that, you know, and it just shows what a big heart that you have. And, yeah, when you put that post out and, like, you were getting donations, it was apparent that you weren't taking anything from it. It Like, it, it's a really big... Um, you know thing for you know well done to you for doing that because a lot of people haven't done that and it just shows what a big heart you've got it's lovely i think our company um it, it is so focused on 
charitable work. It was something that Anita um, was so um, passionate about and um, set up something called Children on the Edge and we help children who are on the edge and have done for all these years. Um, that we've been in, that we've been around, and we provide schools, and we provide help for the parents so that they can get, um, they can have jobs and pay for the children to go to school and actually have a living wage. So it's a massive part of body shop and the body shop at home, um, and that's another reason why I love. It. It's not just about um, selling. It's not just about selling um, products when you sell a shea body butter you know that shea in that body butter has been made by our partners in Ghana from hand and that without us they wouldn't have jobs and they wouldn't have any money yeah um, it's kind of like you know what goes around comes around doesn't it you know and you if you're helping the world you know you are providing jobs for, for those people so when we buy body shop from you like does that is there a donation or is it like what happens you know for the consumer who buys off you how are they helping with things so if they're buying i was got oh i was going to grab one but i haven't got a, a shea butter here but um if you're buying a shea butter product or product with shea butter and it's in a lot of our products you know that those ladies who make it in ghana are getting a fair and living wage um for making it they literally grind it by hand so you know that where where that is made and how it's made and the good it's doing over there. Um, and then with the charity, some of our products, for instance, our hemp hand cream, there is always a charitable donation from that that goes to the that goes to our charity. And then you can make a donation as well. And a lot of our products now are made with recyclable and and recycled plastic. And we have a big project. Um, that helps that helps the litter pickers um to make sure that they are not working in horrendous conditions um and they work in proper factories now um sorting the past plastic for recycling for us that's amazing it's quite quite a, a round thing of, of charity there it's really really good um so you've been doing this for seven years now um you, you're a manager in it so what does that mean it means you've got a team so you've you've recruited uh ladies or gentlemen i have had one man and um, <laughs> um he was only young um i think yeah i think he perhaps thought it would be a bit easier than it was because you do have to work <laughs> you know nothing comes easy does it you do have to work um and i have got yeah a team of, of ladies who are all super some of them um, want to make a big business out of it. The majority of them just want to earn some extra money. And obviously at the moment, that's so important, isn't it? That extra money, we all need it, don't we, for our bills. Um, and you yeah, can do It really is because, you know, well, there's gas and electric, there's the, um, there's the petrol prices and things like that. And, you know, I think even people with money are thinking about a bit of the crunch you know it's it just makes sense to so um like i've even you know cancelled a couple of things that i have that i wasn't using you know and but it's not just about saving money like the other thing is what i'm doing is making more money you know that's the effort and so a lot of people don't know where to make more money especially if they're working already or if um you know they've been in a situation where they it's it's just the same all the time um so how can body shop help with that okay so for just we have two we now have two kits that you can buy so we have a 29 pound kit and a 59 pound kit obviously the 59 pound kit is bigger than the 29 pound kit but both give you the same access to all the support the new system that we've got starting, which I'm really excited about this month, which is going to be just fantastic. So we've got a brand new system coming in that's already been used in America. So we're already in the USA. Um, we launched in the USA during the pandemic and been so successful. So anybody joining the team will be part of the global team now. 
what's it going to launch That's exciting isn't it yeah so like online we're so much more global now like i've got people in my memberships from australia america you know lots and lots of different places yeah so um we we can recruit in in the usa we're going to be able to recruit in Australia and Canada, sell over there as well. It's going to be so exciting. So this new system is going to enable us to, to have a better reach. It's going to be better for our consumer, uh, for our customers, and it's going to be better for us as well. It's it's a fantastic system that that launches this month. So whichever kit people choose, they will have the same access to everything. And they've got me, Emma. <laughs> they've got me. It's a big draw with you because. I think, you know, obviously with the kind of thing that you do, you don't, if you have a good team leader, a good manager who has been in it for a longer time and has like kind of training skills and, and people skills that can teach you that, it goes a long way rather than somebody just saying, oh, join my team. You, you know what I mean? Where it's it's just, you know, you will I know that you do help people like I know you that like, you help people launch the businesses and I know you have like team meetings and things like that so it it's a smart thing to do <laughs> to go with with you to uh, to join if you want to earn some extra money isn't it always say to people um it's worth a go it's 29 pounds at the very least um and give it a go there's nothing lost, is there? Because you've got more than that in products when you've joined. Um, and if you don't like it, and that is exactly what I thought when I joined. So when I signed up with Amanda, I thought, well, I'll get the kit. I'll have a go. I probably won't be very good at it, but let's see where it goes. Um, I can always leave. And I think it's that idea that you can always leave that helps a lot of people who are a little bit unsure. There's nothing lost. So I think give it a go. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's fine. Nobody's going to turn around and say, I'm never speaking to you again because, you know, you didn't want to be in my business. That is absolutely fine. But give it a go because you may just love it. And that's, it's it's really funny. That's what you did, isn't it? Because, you know, you ha like journalism, it's a professional career. Um, and it, it's just funny, isn't it? You know, like you gave it a go you started earning more than you were like in journalism so like like it says on your t-shirt game changer <laughs> uh, yes exactly because for me obviously the money is is important it's important for everybody isn't it but for me the time the time i now have to do the things i want to do is just so important so when my boys were young and I was working at the paper if I had said to any of the editors I worked for and, and rightly so if I'd said well can I just have a couple of hours off you know he, he needs to go I need to go to my son's um I don't know his, his parents day or a sports day or something like that or it would have been, well, no, not in the middle of the day, Gail. No, no, we've got a paper to get out. Or, you know, I just want to go and take them to the park. Or, well, I can't, of course you can't do that. No. And rightly so, you know what I mean? It's not really um, unexpected that they would say that. However, now I can just say yes. If, if Kobe rings me and says, Grandma, can we do this? Can we go swimming? I can say, yeah, okay, Kobe. As long as I'm not working, obviously. If I've already planned to work, I wouldn't... Um, saying you know i wouldn't say yes then but we can plan it in because i can do what i want to do when i want to do it and that and that time is so precious and it, it does give a balanced life doesn't it because life is one one life really that we're here for this life i believe and that is you know it, it can get a, a really big grind can't it if if you're just working full time and then you know you don't have time for your kids you don't even have time to like sort out your bills and stuff when you're working 40 hours a week and things um but it's if you can earn some extra money then at least you can do some extra good stuff with your kids or your grandkids or 
just treat yourself, get a massage or something like that. <laughs> um, but you've got that balance now, haven't you? And it's so sweet. I know that on a Thursday, you see your mom and you see your grandkids on different days. So it's it's a nice balance for you. Yeah, and I think that's important for me now because my mum's elderly. Uh, well, my dad is as well, but my mum is needing my help a lot more. And so to be able to spend that time with her, <laughs> when my dad's playing golf, he's 86, he's 87 this year, playing golf, you know. But <laughs> my mum needs me, she, you know, she needs some support on that day. It's great. I don't have to worry. So Thursdays are our mum's day. Um, and like I say, if I want to do something with the grandchildren. However, you're right, even if, You've still got to work or you want to work. You may have a job you love. I've had ladies in my team who love their job and would never give it up, but they love this as um, a little bit of fun on the side. You know, playing with makeup, getting free products, selling to their family and friends. They just love it as a girly to do. Yeah, because, like, if you're a mum, if you've got you working and things like that, like, I love a little me time like my skincare or just having a shower is when you can escape you know what I mean so like having the nice things do, does add to it as well I use the banana shampoo on Jacob's hair as well it's really good um and so yeah there's lots of different things for that for yourself but also basically it's like I use this and then you talk about it to your friends and on social media and that's how you sell it, isn't it? So it's not any pressure to do any big deal things. But if it's a nice thing to do and it earns you some extra money, then it's a bit of a no-brainer if you like that kind of thing, isn't it? That's what I think. And, and it isn't a pressured company. There's nobody pressuring you. There's nobody saying, there are no targets. Nobody's saying, you must hit this, you must do this. You do it at your pace and what you want to do. Um, and yes, you can sell on social media. I have ladies who literally have never done a party, don't want to do parties, which is fine. Um, when I started in the business, you had to have four parties before you started set up. It was a, a party plan business, really. That was how our business worked. Of course, COVID changed everything. And a lot of our work now is online. That's great. That works. That works really well. Um, so we have ladies who just sell online and we have ladies who still love to go out and party and we do events. Um, so we might, oh, we do fundraisers as well, Emma. I need to mention fundraisers because if there are any charities out there looking for help fundraising, that's one of my big, um, big pleasures in life is doing a fundraiser for, for charity. I so how would that work if a charity um, wanted to do a fundraiser? How would you get involved? So uh, they would find the venue, they would invite people to it, they sell tickets, so they then obviously make the money from selling the tickets. They might put on a few refreshments, I usually say put a glass of bubbly on or um, a cup of tea even, I've done them for the guide dogs where they put, that was so funny actually, I hope I've got time to tell this story. Um, I, did, <laughs> I used to do them for guide dogs for the blind and the ladies had to put on coffee and cakes only one of the guide dogs ate the cakes. Really naughty, jumped up on the top and ate the cakes. So nobody got to eat the cakes anyway. Um, the so, so then they all come to the event, people come to the event, they bought tickets. Um, I run a party basically, it's a massive party. Well, as big or small, depending on how many people are there. Uh, show products and uh, people buy products so we order them for them then I give a percentage of the commission to the charity I also give some raffle prizes and they make the money from the raffle um, so there's quite a lot of money there available to be made we also have the um, I'm doing this like you know what I mean um, we also have raffle squares um, which is like the old football card do you know, I've been to a, um, a body shop fundraiser many years ago. Um, it was a charity to do with um, special needs. My son has special needs. So it was that charity. And um, it was so good. It was really good fun. 
Um, so definitely, I would definitely go back to one of those. Or like, and it's supporting the charity and the person doing it. You know, if it's you, it's you're really bubbly and lovely. So I bet it's a really good laugh. We play games and yeah, they're really good fun. But the the main thing is that I can help charities make some money. And at this time again, it's not just us as individuals who are struggling. I know charities are really struggling to make money because we haven't got the money to give to the charities, have we? Um, yeah. You know they are, and they're a nice um, release for people if they're fed up. It's a bit of fun for the evening. Brilliant. So I've put your link here, which is the link tree um, slash Gail McBain. Um, and uh, go and have a look at that. You can um, join the team. You can go into a groups and things like that. But reach out to Gail um, if you want to chat about anything. Um, it's really um, a pleasure um, doing this interview with you, Gail. And, you know, I love meeting with you every month and buying products and stuff like that. I love all the smells of them and things. Um, so they're just lovely so um yeah if anybody got any questions you know pop them in the the comments and we'll have a look at them later katie's just said hello to us so that's nice and um yeah so thank you for being the gossip girls gold interview today um can i just ask you gail what do you like about being a gossip girls gold i there's so much emma there's so much it's the support it's meeting all the lovely ladies either in person or on you know on on things like this or online the, the support is amazing if you just ask a question there's always lots of people answering it and i am rubbish on technology so if i ever put a question on about technology it's fantastic to get a response uh, and always so quickly it's just the whole uh, friendship i think for me i love the friendships that i've made Lovely, thank you. Uh, so Melis has just said, uh, Melis Steph has just said, love body shop products. Ah, yeah, we all love them. There's so many, isn't there? There's um, new passion fruit. Oh, <gasps> this new passion. Oh, new passion fruit. Passion fruit. Oh, is it back to front? Is it vegan as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, I want to smell it. You've got to hold it up to the screen, and I can't smell this now. The body of it. We're going completely vegan. Um, so that's one of our new products, uh, passion fruit. Ooh. It's I, um, I've got um, one of your yogurts, and they're really good um, all over moisturiser, and um, they soak in really well. So you're not like, you know, like when you put a moisturiser on and it's really like thick, you're kind of sloping around in it. But I feel like the uh, the yoghurt ones, the, they just dry on, on really fast. They soak in really well, don't they? So um, it reminded me, I need to pack one because I'm going away on Friday, uh, leaving hubby behind. I'm going away with my parents and my sister. I'm going to pack this one. This is the almond milk because... The body yogurts, if you put them in the fridge when you're abroad, uh, coming out out the sun, have your shower and put it on. Oh, it's so nice. So would that be like an after sun? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I got the almond milk one and I find it really, like I put it on my, my legs after I've shaved, you know. It's really calming. Yeah. Gorgeous. I love this. It's great for anybody who's got eczema, even kids really good fantastic right I, I can't we said at the beginning gail said i hope i've got enough to talk about and now we're coming up to 30 minutes but this is why we we just love to chat to gail so thank you everybody for listening and watching um melis says that looks amazing so that's really good and we can we'll catch you next time with another gossip girls gold interview take care everybody bye